Hello and welcome to another episode of Menace to Sobriety, your podcast to keep you on a straight and narrow or just to get a little bit of information about all things well-being, mental health, sobriety, good fun, light-hearted, proper, real talk right here in the studio. Not just with myself, Dan O'Reilly, aka Comedian Dapper Laughs and fellow sober guy, uh, my co-host, uh, and I don't mean to boast, but he is a nice lad, Kirk Norcross, how, how are you? Doing? We're back, baby. How you been? You good? I'm good, man. Um, it's yeah, back again. I love it. It goes really fast. Fridays, you've done something exciting. I done my I done my stand-up comedy show before I go into it. John, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, tell him what's happened with John's camera. Oh yeah, and, my uh, camera and the screen. Oh, it's all yeah. falling apart. It's screen- going off in here today. The screen's on a timer. John's forgot his camera. Um <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. How are you though, John? Yeah, doing good, thank you. Doing very well. You're starting to get a few fans, aren't you? A couple of people have, have wrote comments about. Uh, someone ironically wrote, "We want to see more of John." That's what. <laughs> that's why I broke his <laughs> fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd see you kicking something yeah. down the road. No, but yeah, people are getting interested in you, John. Yeah. Well, you know, come say hello. It's uh, lovely to uh, lovely to be acquainted with you. And uh, sorry that my face is just not acceptable enough for the podcast today. So. Oh. I had a spot, and Dan would let me come on. So fair enough. <laughs> Certainly right for eating a chip. Um, but yeah. Yeah, talking of spots, he actually did a spot at my comedy gig. Yeah. So John how? Did. Yeah. So how was it? So can you tell me why you done? Uh, it was. It was. It was not a big. Gig no, like no, you no. So do. yeah, I'm gearing up for a tour. I got a massive 28 day UK tour in uh, January. For those of you that don't know, I'm a comedian by trade. Um, one of the first social media comedians. Uh, the the to me maybe the first. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, my my originally by trade, what I do is I'm a stand up comic, and uh, yeah, I've done an hour because I've been testing material. I wrote loads of stuff. So is this what this is for? Testing the water. Yeah, testing the so water. You literally me. do stuff and cross it off or ticket. Yeah, a bit a bit like that. I got I got an audience down to my club because I still got a club. I'm turning it into a comedy club now because I'm not <laughs> on the yep, smash. Nice. So I was I was I was on stage, and the beautiful thing is they're quite quite cool hardcore fans that come down because they were like the ones that bought tickets straight away and yeah. it's an intimate night. Where uh, is this? Because I'm going to clap them. Clap them. It was in Clapham. Yeah. But it was fucking mental. But what I do is the first half of the show, we do audience improv uh, where I'm just sort of like just off the cuff I- improvising with the audience. It was wild, wasn't it, John? You are very good at that, man. Like just zinging and zanging with the crowd, like just saying whatever the fuck comes to their mind. I'd be terrified of doing that. But yeah. yeah. It was that good, is, wasn't it? It was great. It's so good. My audience is great for it because they're all wild. Yeah. You, know? you get many. Ooh. I did get a few oohs, yeah. And Sometimes then the, they laugh. They go, <laughs> oh. Yeah, they go, <laughs> then they go, oh my God, I'm not meant to laugh at that. That's what you want. You want them to laugh despite themselves. That's yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, push through yeah. that boundary. Yeah, cause, and then I go, ha, see? You're as bad as me. <laughs> but um, And then and the second half was actual material. So it was great. Anyone that came, thank you. That was good fun. Kirk, what did you get up to? Uh, so I've had my son all week because of holiday. So loads of fun. And then this weekend was a year. So on Sunday was a year since I've been living in Norfolk. Right. Um, yeah, so I celebrated. I got my brother and sister-in-law and my niece and nephew around. Lovely. I spent a lot of money on... Just junk food, really. So I've yeah. relapsed a little bit on junk food hard, <laughs> yeah. which was bad, to be honest. And then yeah. I shit myself twice this morning. <laughs> okay, great, great. <laughs> Funny you should talk about relapse because, John, that's that's the... Oh, before we get into that, actually, what I wanted to do, yeah. I just wanted to say a little something to my audience or to our audience now, mm-hmm. to the audience. Uh, I just wanted to say thank you because last week, on last week's episode, I had a little bit of a moan, actually, um, where I'd had a tough week um, with some negative comments. In fact, you actually had one of them pissed you off this week didn't it yeah but yeah, yeah. Um, well let me quickly say that yeah look i am i really i still ironing out creases in my life and some of the negative comments when yeah. i'm trying to do something good yeah 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 yeah. when i get a negative comment that does hurt because yeah. i'm only trying to help and yeah. so obviously i talk about all my days of using and i normally yeah 95 percent of the time i'd buy tickets because i never wanted yeah. to go on a mad one yeah um and then when i spoke about the elvis story uh someone's like he said he had an eighth. If you watch podcast 1.2.6 at 16 <laughs> seconds, he says he buys tickets. Yeah. And it got to me because I'm like, man, I'm just trying to help. I'm, yeah. I'm, I, look, I'm, some of my journey is funny. Some of it was traumatic. But I'm, re- I'm only trying to do this. Why yeah. it helps me? Yeah. You know, and then someone's like, well, saying he's got a games room, has he? No, it was just, I was telling you, because you've yeah. been at my house, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, and he did have a games room. So. Yeah, well, I haven't no more. Yeah, would you want him to pretend? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but no, I get no, it, and, and, and the good thing me. about me and you, man, one day I'll, I'll play a couple of our voice notes, but I'll have to check which one's first, but yeah. we um, <laughs> we fire back and forth when the, when the podcast goes out and there's some negative comments, and, and that got to him, and I said to him, look, listen, 
you know, you know. So I know what you used to be like. If it was a special occasion, you'd get get the big load in. I'd call it and, on, and, and the ticket was like just your day to day. And when you look back on it, that's mad. It but, is mad, yeah. But, um, but listen, I, what I wanted to clarify before we got into the podcast is. I had a moan about some negative comments, and then we had an overwhelming influx of positive comments on this. Uh, on, Which on, I love as well. Yeah, they it was really great. Me out. It was great, um, and it was uh, and madly, madly, um, the podcasts are picking up pace at mad rate. It only went out Friday, um, like we record it on a Monday, and then we wait all week for it to come out on a Friday, and now it's Monday morning. It's already had ten thousand views. So and we're doing another one already. Aren't yeah, we? and we're doing one now. So let me read a couple of these out. I just want to say thank you to a couple of people. Philip Wade said this is the best podcast. I've seen Dapper Kirk is a legend you two have got this spot on every topic you touch on is relevant and gives us great strength thank you brothers thank you I just want to I, the reason why I want to do this is I want to focus on positive stuff moving yes. forward in my life not the negative stuff so I'm going to focus on unlike me <laughs> yeah, well we're <laughs> helping each other Jane Cook said what an absolute cracker of an episode this week thanks guys honestly every time Kirk shares something it's more it's like looking in the mirror um, she must be um, yeah she must be she must be relating to you a lot totally get him on the psychosis thing funny stories looking back but yeah Many times I've lay in bed seeing people at the mm. door of the hall, hearing things, and in the end, my, now my ex partner truly believed I was hiding another man up in the loft for three months. <laughs> 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 uh, crazy looking back bonkers thank you so much I'm maybe one of the few girls that truly relies on each, on, on you each week to help I oh. love that we need uh, we need guests this is this is something that I've responded to guys this is something that I've actually sorted out we need guests as well not just you two lost a lot of momentum that was gathering early on uh, getting guests on uh, with you is, and Kirk is a good idea maybe get Joey Diaz on that would be amazing but Joey Diaz he's a fucking alright cocksuckers brilliant he still uses doesn't he yeah, I, I don't know mate I don't he's know. a wee guy now now he's yeah. taking like a thousand milligrams THC just to get to sleep so well, you yeah. know fair enough <laughs> but on that note I have listened and I've started booking guests in so stay tuned guys I'm booking guests in it'll be me Kirk John and a guest for a few uh, and there might even be a guest next week because Kirk is off somewhere else going to Cornwall going to take my son away for yeah. uh, seven nights in Cornwall can't okay. wait for the uh, eight and a half hour journey there because I bought an electric car I have to stop twice <laughs> to charge it woo no you go woke you go broke <laughs> uh, Dan please keep these podcasts going um, best one I've come across I really enjoy it uh, that was from Michael please don't please don't jack it in guys I'm uh, I, I and I and thousands of others really benefit from these episodes I'm 216 days sober today well done I love that. Let the haters go. Re um, read their messages and let it go. So powerful. And this was a big one from Andrew. Unfortunately, podcasts like this act as a mirror to people who know they are struggling and you're just saying exactly what's happening. One thing I've learned about giving horrible people a pass is, is that I believe that comes down to our self-worth uh, struggles where we allow this to happen to us. Sometimes it's totally acceptable to call a C-U-N, a C-U-N. So yeah, so I do days. agree with that uh, to an extent. Like, well done. Yeah. Like, he's, he's commenting on what you said because you wanted me to just... Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, some people are suffering. You've got to let them slide because they're having a bad day and if they just want to take it out, or maybe someone they don't know so yeah. they don't get no comeback. But, you know, if you constantly start letting... Look, look our life is social media. We can't we can't say yeah. it isn't. So if we start letting people uh, allow it to, to be negative yeah. and rude and say bad things about our family, you yeah. know, someone yeah. said rude things uh, about your, your poor father, you know... <coughs> when this starts, then this starts becoming a part of our life. And then we're yeah. letting business clients and friends do what they want to us and slides. Yeah. And I believe it starts to take a little bit of our character away. But again, it is nice to be yeah. nice and yeah. it's not nice to be horrible. Yeah. All right. So basically, yeah, if you give a shit, it's kicking up. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Let's get into this episode, guys. As you know, we pick a different topic each week. We have a little bit of a riff on it. And just to reiterate, uh, we're going to have some guests coming on soon to spice things up. But this week, John, what are we talking about? Okay. So this week, the sobriety topic is the dreaded relapse. Mm, right. So um, let's start with, uh, in this context, in sobriety context, what is meant by a relapse? Kirk? So a relapse would be, uh, for, for my case with cocaine, um, would be literally going sober to, to a point when I say I'm never going to do it again, uh, and then literally picking up a drug for me. I know other people could be drink, could be gambling, yeah. could could be relapsing with anyone has an addiction to something to, uh, uh, you know, but me, it was drugs and yeah. Relapses, we get into that. It's um, it's a part of a lot of people's journey. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes people benefit from a relapse. Some people never come back from a relapse. Um, but you can never look at someone else and say, "Well, they relapse and they're fine now." So maybe I can go out. Don't never look. Yeah. This is your journey. But relapses, 
from going teetotal mm. to picking up a substance or gambling or something yeah. like that. I, fi- I find it really difficult to talk to people about relapsing because I get a lot of messages or people in my life that I know or other people, uh, mainly on social media, people saying, oh, Dapper, I've been listening to your podcast or whatever, and I relapsed this weekend. And it's a really difficult one for me because I wanna what I wanna say is what I, what I wanna say really to people is take the relapse, fucking really focus on how that's made you fucking feel yeah. and learn something from it and yeah. don't beat yourself up. There's no point over fucking thinking it and beat yourself up. You know, learn something from it and take it with you on your journey. It's all part of your journey. But then part of me thinks by saying that, it's like I'm excusing them yeah. to relapse again. Yeah, yeah. But, it's but, a thin line. Yeah, it's really difficult to advise on it because you say you're too hard on someone and it can push them push over them the edge yeah. or you're, you're too lenient on them. So I think that we tackle this subject by not coming from a judgmental perspective just nope. by stepping back and maybe t- talking about um, how different relapses look because for me, I was very different uh, to you, obviously, in the way that, way that we used. And mm. I went sober the, like last year and like I was like, right, I'm going sober. Mm-hmm. And my relapse crept up on me um, where I sort of had to start convincing everyone else. It wasn't like, it, it wasn't like, but I never looked at it as a relapse. I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to be sober actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and well, again, uh, that is your addiction. Like I, I, I believe that addiction is got, it's, it's like a second part of you and it tricks you. What I learned yeah. in recovery, when you're in recovery, your your addiction's outside doing ten press ups waiting for you, you know. Yeah. So that was your addiction tricking you. Well, no, you're you're not relapsing. You're yeah. just not going sober no more, Dan. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. not doing nothing bad. You've just give up going sober. Yeah. You've not relapsed because you're just doing what you normally do. Yeah. And it's and mad, isn't it? How it works. How yeah. you frame it, it seems. So yes. much, so much of it is like the self talk that you have with yourself it's, and how you frame it. Manipulation your... to yourself. Yeah. Like like. But whose side them. are you on? It's yeah. like, yeah, it's constantly yeah. battling yourself, man. But it happens week to week for people, man. It happens week to week for people. I mean, for me, it was, I had, I can remember having, I can remember having miniature um, uh, miniature relapses, I guess, where I decided that I was going to go sober for a certain amount of time for something, mm-hmm. and then I've broken that sobriety as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's so many different ways to it, but I can remember when I was going through months and months and months of sobriety. I think I got to like three or four months. I don't, I can't remember exactly, and I was like really into it, and it felt good. And the the, the risk that you run is you start feeling so good that you're like. Man, I don't have a problem. Yes, because, yeah. Because yeah. You've mastered it. You yeah. Feel. And my missus was happy and that. And I can remember the conversation I had. It was coming up to Christmas. And I said to Shelly, I was like, do you know what? I don't. And it was like I was lying. I was definitely lying. It was like, you know, I don't really want to get on the gear anymore anyway. Like, I don't want to touch the gear mm. uh, because I'm just feeling so happy. And, you know, Christmas is coming and I kind of feel like, do you know, what, a couple of drinks over Christmas would be nice. So, you know, when we're going for, because we were going out for a meal for an Italian, right, I was yeah. like, I'm going to have a couple of beers at that meal. And she was like, all right, if you feel like you're cool, because nothing like, you know, I'd kind of made the decision to go sober. She hadn't told me to go sober. Yeah. I'd made the decision to go sober because it was fucking my mental health yeah. up. And I was being an arsehole to her and the yeah. kids and like whatever. Um, but, but, she, and she, but, but she got a taste of sober me and yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Right? Um, and then I remember I went for the meal and I had a few beers and I was like, oh man, I'm all right. And that was it. I just had a few beers. Then I think yeah. the next couple of times I drank, I had a few beers. And then a bit later on, I got smashed. And I think maybe three or four times after that, getting smashed, I got on the gear. Yeah. And then after that, every time I got smashed, I got on the gear. So, and then within a month, I was back worse than I was the first time. I feel that. And um, and do you know what the crazy thing about that was? Then Shelly's going, wow. So Shelly was like, oh, okay, so wow. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm fine. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, uh, I know what you mean. It's it's, it's the snowball again. Yeah. It's that snowball effect. So you feel that you mastered it. I know a lot of people. Uh, a friend of mine, he went thirty days sober. Yeah, um, and he thought, oh, I'm fine then. I can do this now. Now that I know what to do, I can cut it off. So I'm going to go celebrate mm. by getting on it tonight. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because he felt that he mastered it, and then, oh fucking hell! Right, I won't do it in a week's then. And then you do it on a weekend. And it starts exactly, you're an addict. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it starts when we come off of the relapse and we might start, it snowballs again. Yeah. Like we did when we first started drugs or drink. Oh, I'm only yeah. going to do it weekends. Oh, I'll do it Friday and Saturday. 
Oh, fucking hell, I'm a bit fucking tired on the Monday. Uh, yeah, I, I, I do it Friday, Saturday. Oh, but think the boys are getting together Wednesday. All right, just this week, yeah. I do it Friday, Saturday, and Wednesday. And then it goes boom, 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 like that. So my relapse. Um, so I've briefly spoke about it last podcast. So um, I was in recovery, and I got. Uh, the, I said, remember when I said I had the nice tight group of boys that we were yeah, hanging yeah. around with, and they found a packet and they thought it was yours, and they just accused me. No, they didn't accuse me. They all accused. They all said it's Kirk without even asking me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, listen, I would hold my hands up, like, yeah. and say, "Look, I fucked up. Can you help me?" But the thing that really hurt me is they were meant. We're in sobriety. You're meant to look after each other in the fellowship. None of them come and confided in me. Yeah, none of them. One of my mates, Matt, told me months after, Kirk, you know, so and so said you. He goes, I've told him it's not you because I'm working with you every day. So I thought, you know what? Fuck yous, man. Like, yeah. how, how bad? Listen, if you thought that, mm. like, so I just, people were talking behind my back that was meant to have my back. So, um, so I fucked them all off. Um, and then I was still going to meet meetings in the evening at CA. Uh, and then lockdown hit. So the meetings went on to Zoom. And I couldn't get with them. I need this. I need yeah. connection with people. I need to feel energy and let you yeah. feel my energy. So I was doing these Zoom meetings. Um, i have done a few in one week in the evenings and then I just wouldn't bother me. And then a load of little things were happening in my life that I'd normally speak to at meetings. Yeah. And they weren't like little like things. Like what? Just, just stupid things. You know what I mean? Like I'll be jet washing and my machine might break that day and I've got to stop the job, go get it fixed, come back and fix it. But normally at a meeting... Mm. I would talk about that. It's only a little problem, mm. but um, I remember, trigger. yeah, little, little, little things were happening, and then um, when I relapsed, I mean, it hit me hard. So I'm jet washing on the same road where my dealer lives. No, right. And every day when I was working, I'd have my mate Matt, who's in recovery, working with me. He couldn't come with me this day, so I'm jet washing and I'm looking at the layby where I'd meet me pal. Do you know what I mean? And pick up. And I was Fucking like, hell. And it just boom, hit me. And I thought, I told this guy, because he's a friend of mine, and not to tell to me no more. And he was so proud about my sobriety. I actually think the day before I bumped into him and he said, mate, I'm so proud of you. So I knew he wouldn't. The guy's house where I was jet washing, I was friends with his son. I'm like, mate, listen, can you go grab me some thing? He's like, you go grab it, man. Like, go grab it. I was like, oh, no, this is what it is. I'm, I'm in recovery and he ain't going to give it to me. Well, what, mate, can you remember that moment you decided? It, on. Like, I'm not lying. It was me jet washing. Oh, that's where I used to meet so-and-so. I'm jet washing. Jet washing. Boom. A tight feeling in my chest. And I'm like, it's on. It's on. I need to do it now. Nothing's going to stop me. I quickly run up, rung up one of my mates and said, I can't stop this now. What This feeling, I need to get on it. Uh, and he said, Kirk. Listen, just crack on with your job, put your head down. So I put the phone down, fag after fag after fag, and I thought, fuck it. Just said to the boy, I said, but, uh, Brad, his name was, I said, Brad, can you go just run up there, please, mate? And uh, I said, uh, listen, just go do it for me. Like like begging, like a fiend. Do you know what I mean? Like, please, please. He's like, Kirk, I can't do this. So I said, listen, you're either going to go do it for me or I'm going to have to stop the job and go do it, rah, rah, and, uh, and he got it, and boom, straight away, like, I've walked, got it. He, walked, he, walked, he went up, got it, and come back. Got and, it, give it to me. Were you, were you shaking and that? Like, like it was the only thing that could calm me down or get rid of this feeling was to sniff a line. That was the only thing. And straight away, locked myself in my van, in the back of the van, and done one. Right. <sighs> done another one. I think this, whatever day it was, that was me gone again for a few days. After nine months, I was nine months Fucking sober. Hell, and I went straight home. And I picked up more on the way home. Um, and then I thought, fuck, I'm going to let everyone down. I've let everyone fucking down. My dad was proud of me. Everyone was proud of me. I'm like, fuck. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? So I just went on a fucking rampage that weekend. So I think, right, just get this out of your system. Did you try and hide it? Uh, well, yeah. Well, I locked myself in my house. So I'd lock myself in my house. And when I go pick up, I'll leave at like twos in the morning. So like, because I live next to my father. So I just make sure. Even though, even though I'd wait till the morning, my dad had cameras, alarms, and gates. He'd know every time I'd go out. He'd wake him up on his phone. Doo, 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 doo. Kirk's picking up drugs again. <laughs> and I, I remember, and then I think in midweek, I went over to my dad's and said, uh, it was my dad and his partner. And I said, look, I've relapsed. You know, I said, I fucking feel terrible for it. Um, and they were, they were so nice about it, it made it feel easier. They were just being supportive because I'd been open and said, look, I've relapsed. And they're like, no, listen, you've done really good, Kirk. Well done for coming to say it to us. I was like, my addict was like, oh. Now I can relapse again. That weren't bad. 
Mm. That weren't bad. So I, I don't think so. I, I, I managed a couple of weeks without doing it in the day, but doing it on the weekends, Friday to the Sunday when I didn't have my son. And then if I knew I'd have my son, I'd probably go on the weekday leading up to, mm. I picked my son up on a Thursday. I was like, right, you get on it till f- Thursday. Um, so you weren't doing it, yeah, when you had your boy, that's good. Yeah, and it yeah. just went, yeah, you know what? No matter how bad my addiction been, when uh, once me and my partner split up, whenever I'd have my son, it's like no, yeah. no go, which I've sort of got to have a little bit of respect for myself yeah, for nothing. that. And no disrespect to people who have done it around the kids. Addiction will get you in any sort of way, but it was bad. So I was jet washing, and obviously I hadn't, I hadn't done drugs in nine months, so I, I, I had a bit of money about me, you know, because I had nothing else. My life was sobriety. Everything mm. was free that me and the sobriety lads were doing. We were going kayaking. We were going just for walks and stuff. So I just went, boom, on a fucking mad one through lockdown. I don't even know how long. I don't know if it was lockdown one, lockdown two. Um, and it just, and I, I was like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Boom, jump straight back into the meetings again, I think. Did we have a break between lockdown one and two? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we had that, yeah, we had that summer where like we were allowed to leave our houses. Yeah, and some of the meetings opened up. I went back in there and I was like, back into my program. Before that was a wobble. Opened up to everyone. A lot of people telling me it was part of their journey. Rah, rah, rah. Um, and then, yeah, and then I was sort of, you yeah. know, I wasn't the same on my second relapse, uh, on my second sobriety. Mm. I was disheartened with the program of CA. Because I felt that you let me down, you let me down. Your CA's meant to be there for me, but it wasn't. It was me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, and then obviously the relapse when my father died. Uh, I spoke about this on the first uh, podcast. First podcast. So um, get ready. Yeah. Um, so listen, like I even though I went sober, probably leading up to my dad killed himself January twenty first. I think I was sober months and months and months before that. Um, um, but yeah, so when my dad. Yeah, so my dad, my dad killed himself, and you know I found him. Um, you don't have to talk about no, it. It's if all you right. Don't it's want all right. To. It's a journey. This will help other people, hopefully. But you know what? So um, mm. yeah, I found my dad. I was giving CPR, and then I, I just I said it back on podcast one. Couldn't I? I just I needed drugs. I wanted to kill everyone. Mm. Like anyone that had ever done anything bad to my dad. Like I was like, I will take out the fucking world. I physically couldn't. Yeah. But I was like. I literally, so, cut my dad down, CBR, run out the door. I think I spoke to my brother. It was a bit of a blow. I think I spoke to my brother, then rung, rung someone up and said, listen, like, I've just, I'm crying on the phone. I was like, just drop me some thing off. I'm going to do my fucking nut, drop me some thing off. And I got some thing and it was a <sighs> instant relief, man. Do you know what I mean? But that instant relief I could have got by going to a family member and giving them a cuddle. Mm. But I mean, that relapse went from the 21st of January 2021 till the 3rd of May 2021. Um, not when I had my child. To so about five months. Yeah. yeah. So if I have if I have Harry, I wouldn't get on it. But if I had, so I had Harry every other weekend. Mm. So I was yeah. I was off, mate. I was off. And how did you finally pull yourself out of that? Um, I could see some business in the family, um, no one's to blame, but some business in the family that wasn't being sorted, how I thought should have been sorted in the benefit of our family. Um, mm-hmm. And the amount I was doing, I had a bit of money at the time, again, because I was working my ass off. And um, mm. I was I was going to die, Dan. Like, I was, I, I was going to die. The amount of drugs I was doing, you know, it was, mm. it was just, I had a, endless supply i'm not showing off but i had an endless supply of money for drugs you know and it was i had i used to just keep a lot of cash in my house i don't know more because in case i ever 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 will relapse i won't have cash on me now but i used to have a lot of cash in my house and then i'd go to the bank every three four months and put my my jet washing earnings in there and you know and i remember i had a i sold a car just when my dad died and i had a nice bit of cash in there and i was watching it go boom and uh, and uh, oh, my body was fucked. How did you pull yourself out of it? I just had to do it for my family. I could see this family business that wasn't being conducted properly, that could have ended my family financially and then probably mentally and physically. And I was like, I, my dad's not here. Mm. i got to do it. i got to do it. So I went, rung up my mate, any meetings tonight? He went, yeah. Went straight into a meeting, broke down and said, I am going to fucking die. My, I said, this relapse, I have fucking come in harder. Like, 
I don't know if I was on self-destruct mode to, to, to end myself mm. or to blur the pain out, to numb yeah. the pain as we like to do. And I just said, fucking help me. Yeah. Uh, and then I swapped my higher power from God, who I believe is God, to my father. Mm. And uh, he's with me every day, helping through my sobriety. Mm. I conduct myself how my dad was. I saved so many people's houses, financials, by becoming sober, pulling my head out of my own ass, and um, just being a better man for everyone yeah. rather than thinking about myself. But um, yeah, I, that relapse was a killer. That's why you're on this podcast, Kirk. That's why I asked you to come on this podcast with me. Because, and that's why that first episode of ours is like a quarter of a million views. Why, when that went out, everyone saw it. And and um, I, I didn't. I never knew what this podcast was going to become. I just knew that I needed to do something to stay sober and learn while I was doing it. And after that first podcast that I watched that, that I done with you, I mm. was like, "Fucking hell, man!" Because you're the biggest sesh head that I fucking knew, right? Yeah. Um, and I never would have thought that you would have gone sober ever. No, um, I did. Yeah. And then, to uh, when drugs, when when you're that deep into um, alcohol and drug addiction, and and this is a massive thing for anyone that's listening out there because this is so fucking true for a lot of people. Drugs, especially, but drugs and alcohol is a coping mechanism, right? Yeah. What and I'm a say? really, really firm believer of this. That you're surprised if right now you are struggling to. Um, manage your relationship with drink or drugs if you're struggling to manage your relationship with drink and drugs right now and you are at the risk of death if something bad goes wrong in your life really bad because when your coping mechanism is there to fucking cope when something goes wrong so like you are lucky that you survived mm. the, uh, losing your father you're so yeah. lucky but that's why you're sat here on this podcast that's why I wanted you to be here because because to just go sober is 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 phenomenal but to go sober after that and that's what I, I was talking to Shelley about it when we when we done the podcast um you know she because you've met Shelley and we went yeah, out yeah, together we, as, we, yeah, when we were friends yeah. before before we yeah. before, before we parted ways but I, I, Shelley was like how come Kirk and I was like well one I missed him and I wanted no. to see him again but two because fucking this 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 whole podcast is about it is about one people that are struggling yes. but two people that are sober to to keep them sober but, yeah. but free and this is the big one for me this is the massive one for me for this podcast is for those young lads or young women that hear or see something out there that we've done come across it watch it and go fucking hell if Kirk has gone through that and he's managed to get sober I can do that yeah, mate. You know, you know oh, what? I love you, man. Thank you, thank you. I didn't cry. <laughs> oh. right, okay, it's coming. It's people, coming. <laughs> people out there have just got to put bets on at the beginning of the podcast when <laughs> Kirk's going to cry. No, one, come yeah. on, man. That's... No, honestly, yeah, and and that's um, I, at the time of my father's death, I do owe it to my son because if I didn't have, um, I've got a son and a daughter, but my son is 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 with me every day. Yeah. So I always refer to me son because he. This is the minute I thought. You know, if 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 my um, if I didn't have a son, I would have gone the, the day my dad went. You know, that's mm. the truth. And mm. I, I'm not fretting or not. I'm not suicidal mm. now. But yeah, I'll I'll just that that moment, that feeling. Yeah, I would have done the people that done my dad mm. like out of business, and I would have done myself straight away. You know, and and uh, a drug was the only way of getting escaping that. that yeah, that, thought, that feeling thought at that time. But yeah. you know, that was just my addiction telling me because it was a new experience that I'd. A uh, new feeling that I'd never experienced. Like, look, look, really traumatic, you know. Like, um, I think not even it. Just a year after that, <laughs> I told you before it was in the paper. I was seeing a girl. That, yeah. um, so I, I found me. My dad killed himself. I found him. I've went sober. Now everyone was trying to take everything off of my father, which managed not to. Um, and then I was seeing a girl who had a, a, a bizarre ex. She was single for about a year. That um, I was seeing, and then. I left her house and he was waiting for her and 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 tried to kill her with an axe, oh, you know. Fucking and, hell, man. and uh, she FaceTimed me at, uh, just after she got attacked, like seconds after, like, and I thought she was dying on the phone to me, and you know, oh and, my fucking and, and, god, and I went through a lot, and I just thought, fuck, like I've had a lot, like, uh, mate, my dad had it worse, and this girl who got axed had it worse than me, but I'm like, what I've experienced, and I've done it sober. So I had a little bit of respect, a lot of respect for myself and a big pat on the back and say, well done. Yeah. During that time, I'm still being a dad. I'm still doing as much yeah. as I could. I was still working on the jet washing. Yeah. I was still mourning my father's death. I'm then trying to chase everything that had been taken off my father. Yeah, fucking hell. And I give up smoking at the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I was like, you know what? The power of the mind is so 
fucking strong. But you've got to be careful because as powerful as the mind is to make you strong, it's as powerful to make you weak. Yeah. And you've just got to know them triggers. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Listen, life is a fucking journey. And I, I wanted to write an analogy book of, um, I'm just rather sat on the podcast. So, you know, when you go to a, to a, a theme park, you know, yeah. and you see a fucking scary roller coaster and it looks so scary. You're so nervous, but you're excited and you're in the queue, aren't you? And you're all oh, fucking nervous, but let's do it. You get on this roller coaster and you start going really straight. And it's like, oh, that's cool. That's fine. And then you slowly start to go up, mm. up, and it gets really dangerous because it's an experience that you've not experienced before. Yeah. So your body is in enjoy it or get scared of it. And that's why some people are like, ah, and some people are like, woo, you know, and you yeah. get to the top of that roller coaster, woof, it goes down, and then it goes straight. Listen. It's a weird analogy, but this is how I look at life. That is my life. Yeah. You know, we're going to have some fucking highs. Mm. It's how you deal with it. Yeah. We're going to have some big lows. It does go steady at some points. But what you got to do is keep your mind. Your life will go like this, okay? Like a roller coaster. Your life will. But your head doesn't have to go with that. Yeah. You yeah. can still be the same person once you start doing the tips yeah. that me and you put on social media yeah, daily. Yeah. yeah. Situations will happen. Yeah. We are going to have a ho ho high. I'm going to have a low. I'm going to have yeah. a twist. But Kirk Norcross, my head yeah, doesn't yeah. have to go west. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah definitely. And I want to. I just want to. I want to go back to something that you said that I think is vitally important with this relapse thing. You said that when when your father was still with us, God rest yes. his soul, that you went and spoke to him and you said to him and his pal, Look, I've had a relapse, and they were like, oh, okay, cool. And you were like, oh, well, that weren't so bad. So just for the people out there right, yeah. that are dealing with people that are so the partners of addicts or the partners of um, people that are drinking too much and da -da -da -da, that are trying to go sober. That's such a hard one because really what you needed from them was them to go, for fuck's sake, yep. God, don't fuck this up. But don't fuck this up. Again, it's that thin line, isn't it? I needed that. What I would suggest, if anyone has a friend or a family or a spouse or a partner that comes to them and says they've relapsed, if you know that they've been following a program, either CA, NA, AA or their own little program, go on that program with them for one week. Do you know what I mean? If they come and say they've relapsed, Right? You know what's going to fucking happen again. Don't be horrible to them, but tell them. You remember where you was months ago? Mm. Literally, up, let's go to a meeting, yeah. let's go for a walk, let's go do yeah. something free, let's go do something fun. Yeah. Remind them, you know, you've got, you've got to remind them. Of the worst. Of the worst. Show them the picture, what they looked like two months ago. Yeah. Show them this. Yeah, I, I think one, one, one massive, sorry to interrupt, so one massive thing for me is like uh, where I've had my wobbles is where I've got complacent. Yes. Where I've had my wobbles is where I've got complacent. And um, like, for instance, I get like Sunday, I was out with Shelly on Sunday and God, God bless Shelly, man. She she don't drink uh, like hardly ever anymore, but yeah. she she's such a fucking lightweight as well, <laughs> Shelly. She like, she'll hate me for saying this, but like two or three glasses of wine and she starts getting a little bit thingy. And we went to watch my little brother, uh, Wizzy, Chris, love ya. He um, he done a triathlon. It was fucking unbelievable oh, wow, what well he did. Done. Yeah, Bloody hell. It was unbelievable what he did. Um, and then we went for food afterwards. And um, sh uh, my my stepbrother, my, not my, yeah, he's my stepbrother. We've got di yeah. different dads, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but um, he's he's my brother. But uh, we, he, me and him, he doesn't really drink. He's never yeah. really drank ever. It's weird. He's never yeah. really ever drank. He's never done drugs. Yeah. Uh, my relationship with him has flourished now. So I've yeah. got a beautiful, I go running with him every Sunday. We oh, do is that? I, I, yeah, I see. Chris, yeah, we right, do 10K cool, yeah. every Sunday. And uh, anyway, I, t I, I, I was sat with him. But his missus, Janine, mm -hmm. right, and my missus, when they get together, that, you know, some yeah. girls have got girls where they're like, yeah. oh, my God. Let's go <laughs> and when they get together, they really fucking enjoy each other's company. And God bless Shelly. She, she's, she doesn't, she never drinks in the week. She never really has done. Uh, majority, nine times out of 10, if we go out, she won't drink. Yeah. She's, like, I think it's a big relief for her because I think I turned her into more of a drinker in social occasions. Like, Can't beat like, them, join them. Yeah, let's get smashed. Now I'm like, go on, have a drink. And she's like, I don't really want to. Yeah. But when she's with her or certain other people, and I said to her, order a bottle of wine. Have a bottle of wine if you want to have a you two because they were both like looking at me like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I was like, order a bottle of wine, get a gram as well. No, I was like, order a bottle of wine. <laughs> hey, minute, I'll get one for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, order, order, go on. Anyway, bless her in the car on the way back. 
um, she was like, okay, I'm really conscious of the fact that I've had a couple of wines. I'm really conscious of it now. If I'm sorry if I'm going on. I was like, calm down. And it was all good until I had to clean the bouncy car. I got this like <laughs> fake bouncy castle, <laughs> little bouncy castle. I was in the garden trying to clean it. And she come out and she's like, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. <laughs> she tried to help me do the bouncy car. And then she was like really overdoing her facial expressions. That's what she does when she's drunk. I'm like, look, just why don't you just go inside and relax? She's like, <laughs> Doing all this stuff, like, because she was a little bit drunk. Um, but bless her, bless her. But my, my point being is, in that environment, I'm okay now yes. because 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 I make sure that I've I've put in the work. In the morning, I make sure that I've had my run. Yeah, I make sure any things that I'm reading in that day. Uh, you know, I make sure that I, I every day I do something about yeah. my sobriety. I make yeah. sure I do, and also I anticipated that occasion. I was like, right, we're going to go for a meal. There's going to be alcohol around. Fine, and really, actually, because I've put so much hard work into my mental state, which I think is the most important part of sobriety for me, yes. is is training your mind, go, doing things you don't want to do, like the cold yeah. water dips. And then yep. when, when your mind's going, get out, you're like, no, I'm cool, yeah. I'm cool. You literally build up your willpower. Like, it, honestly, that's it's like it. a muscle. You build it. it up. Yeah. yeah. That's what I've spent the last nine months doing, right? Boxing, uh, sparring on Saturday morning. I sparred uh, five new geezers. Wow. We had one after the other, one round after. I mean, I lost all the rounds, but I mean, I was, no, I didn't, I, I didn't say I lost all the rounds, but I mean, I was in there, but I didn't want to. Come second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <you can. laughs> Boxing and shagging. It's the only yeah. time you don't want to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but, 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 but my point is, I was all right. But where I hadn't put the work in before, and I, I was at a barbecue with my friends, and like I, I, I was kind of complacent, it hit me like a brick yeah. fucking wall, like like, exactly, like you're saying, sneaks yeah. up on you. And all you got to think is when you're, like, let's say, active addiction, addiction, or just just out on the sesh, right? Yeah. The amount of hard work that you put in to make sure that your sesh is amazing, you make sure you look the bollocks, you smell the bollocks, you make sure you got the drugs in your pocket, you've got the drugs for lined up for later, you know where you're going for the booze, you've stocked up the beers in the fridge that day. Mm. You've got the why, number. You've got the number safe. Yeah, for, for, why would you not put that effort into yeah. sobriety as well? Fucking right. You've got to carry on doing it. It's a fucking daily thing because the the, the stuff that we read and see and hear daily, it does put our minds back down. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You only got to put on the TV and it's all fast food adverts yeah. in doom and gloom, and and the country's in a complete state. Do you know what I mean? So you have to make sure that you're doing these things, like Dan says, and a lot of these things that you say are free. Yeah, a f you know the yeah, cold yeah. water dips. You yeah, know you can go to your dip, local yeah. fucking like lakes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, don't jump in the Thames. Though. Yeah, Fuck don't me. jump in the Thames. Yeah. I used to do that as a kid. I think that's why I'm a little bit weird. <laughs> you know, it's probably the cocaine but, Kirk. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but no, with with sobriety, you've got to work on it. But it mm. pays off more than yeah, yeah. more than anything, man. Yeah, and um, you know, a massive one for anyone out there that has relapsed, like we said before, or that that is thinking about relapsing. Um, a big one for me: focus on your fucking triggers. Mm -hmm. Like, who was it? Um, I won't say his name actually, but, but one of the lads from boxing. He's um, uh, this morning. I was in there fucking doing the session. We do a mad session. Loads of us in there doing everything, and uh, halfway through, he was like, "Oh fucking!" Because he'd gone like, I think it was. Of only like a month or something but he's training for a fight right yeah. but he's on and off the bag like the bag right, the yeah. punch bag he's on and off the bag and he's kind of like look I'll take it or leave it but when I'm training I've never done a fucking full camp you know without right. being able to fucking have a little and, uh, and he said to me I fucking uh, got on it Friday night and I fucking got on it Friday night and I was like what happened and he's just like oh fucking my missus was taking too long to get ready and I got the fucking up with her you go whatever and 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 then he got on it and he was just like i'm so fucking pissed off and mm. you know i said all the same shit i normally say to my missus it's it was the her fault it guy. was her fault yeah, yeah and um guy. and i said to him like i was like look bruv like the best thing for for you to do now is look at how you romanticized it in yeah. your mind yeah because you romanticized the, the the bag the first line and everything and yep. look how long that romantic bit was well it's only a few days after now and you're you're regretting that already yeah. you yeah, know what yeah. i mean yeah and yeah. now he's got to put the work in because it's in his system because when it's in your system you want more of it right yeah it's one million percent you the minute that starts the, the come down and then when it starts coming out of your blood system yeah, you know like, what i mean you, you just want to crave it but look with anyone that is in recovery right with anything so from personal experience, I know that I've got another relapse in me, right? I've definitely got a relapse in me. There is a chance that I could relapse any minute or any second, but I ain't got another recovery in me, Dan. I have not got another recovery in me, meaning that's, I won't come back. That's scary, man. I, I won't you, come back. I don't want you to relapse, you know? man. But this is what I'd so I, I, I do That would break my heart, you know? Well, I do what you do every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? An addict, to me, an addict is, I will always be an addict. Yeah, of you course. Know? Always be an of addict. Course. So as long as I... 
Um, stay away from triggers, which I moved. I moved, obviously, yeah. I moved to Norfolk to be with my son, but, you know. Well, what's it like there? It's a bit weird. Is it a bit like that Hot Fuzz film? You know? <laughs> no, no. A little, if you go a little bit further up, so I'm on, like, the Suffolk, Norfolk uh, borders, like, just near centre parks, but you know what? Do they look the same as us there? Yeah, just got one more finger. No, I was joking. Nah, you know what? I love it, right? I love where I live. Yeah. Everyone is so nice. Like, everyone is so nice. Mm. You know, like, I went back to Essex the other day. I'm not saying everyone from Essex. Well, I went and dropped my son off to his nans because he was going away. Uh, I was going down the road. There was a skip in the road. So I, I put it was in my, my side. Mm. So I let cars that were on yeah. coming come. I let 12 cars pass. Clearly pulled over, even though it was right away for them. Clearly, not one of them said thanks. When yeah. I'm in Norfolk, every, you know, or everyone, everyone, I go to the same petrol station every yeah. morning, right? They're all speaking to you. The women are lovely in there. There's a yeah. guy that I speak to in Sainsbury's. Just everyone's nice. I go into my gym. I've had the. Like, it's true. It's true. Up up no, up north is the same. My missus goes fucking mental down here. Honestly, if people don't wait, if she lets, her, even if it's an old lady, I'm going to grass her up. I don't give a fuck. Even if it's an old lady, if they don't say thank you, she lets them out. She goes, fuck off your oh, old bag. <laughs> Listen, I ain't the most polite all the time, but you know what? Just not little polite etiquettes, you know? My mum always told me, please, thank you. And I'm joking is, about that old lady stuff. She's never done that. She did chase it. Oh, was that different? No, it was yeah, never. Yeah, we'll speak about yeah. it later. <laughs> but look, how yeah. hard is it to do this? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? And then I, I went back, because even my son noticed. He said, Daddy, no one said thank you. Mm. Right, because he always noticed now, because I always try and tell my son why I'm waving at people. Just so we don't think I'm waving at strangers. No, yeah, no, you're like just saying thank you, and yeah. that bird's fit. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I just quickly just coming my, my, my head. I don't know why it's coming. When, my dad used to have a motorbike when I was a kid, and he always used to take us out on the back. He had all different motorbikes. For a good year, right? I thought my dad was the most popular man ever. Everyone's driving past him on their cycles, nodding to him. I'm thinking, fuck, everyone knows me, dad. And then once I said, Dad, who who is that person? So I don't know. I said, you nodded at each other. And that's what people with motorbikes do. They yeah. nod. I yeah. thought, fuck, man, I thought you were yeah. really popular. <laughs> I thought he must have... 30 people said hello to my dad, yeah. but little things, you know, just little Pe courtesy. People, people do that. Like, motorbikers do that. Bus drivers do that. And ginger people. Yeah. <laughs> they give yeah. each other a hug. Just a real slow hug. Yeah, they just go, it's going to be all right. But uh, shout, shout, out to me, my, shout out to my mate Ginger Joe. He will love that. Um, yeah. Uh, you know what? I've got to mention, it's nothing to do with sobriety, but I've got a friend called Joe. I've done a few videos to TikToks yeah. with him and that. He got me so much. I met him just after my dad passed away. He got me so many jet washing jobs. And uh, he is such, a, he's like you. I mean, he just checks in me all the time. Oh, He'll literally just text me. Like, is he ginger? Not? Yeah, he's ginger. I'll uh, big up the ginger, ginger Joe, the jet washing king. Yeah, he, oh, no, he's a landscaper. He's got a company. He's, uh, but he got me a load of jet washing jobs. And you know what? But, you know, someone Maybe it like, was a jet washing that got his head rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I'm joking. He just, he just don't want nothing from me and he checks no. in me and it really makes me good. feel there are good people like you, like John, like Joe, like, like my, like my yeah. family. There are good people in this world and, you know, um, yeah, it's relapsing, man. Just fucking... Yeah. You've got to stay away from triggers. That's right? that, that. That's the big one. I mean, we've digressed a little bit there, but yeah. I, and we're going to go to some voice notes, I hope. Can we I just, yeah, just the triggers quickly. So, yeah. like, that's what I was say gonna you've say, yeah. done... Sorry, sorry. It's environment, isn't it? Yeah, exactly that. So, say you've done months sober. Like we said, I think her name was... I can't remember. She'd done a voice note. She was living in Spain. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. And she wanted to go to O Beach or something. And uh, so, say you've been, let's just say, a month mm. sober. Uh, you know what? I can still go in the pub with me mates and stuff like that. I'm not saying you can't go to the pubs, but until you've mastered this art, yeah. right, you're going to go in the pub and you're going to have a J2O. Mm. Then you're going to have another J2O. Then you're going to go in there weeks and you're like, fuck me, I've been coming in this pub for a month. So I'm all right. I'm all right. You know what I mean? And then you're like, you know what? Let me just have a shandy. We can have a shandy. We had shandy as kids, didn't we? That's fine. I didn't. But no, you know, and then it's yeah. shandy, and then I'll oh, just give me a Foster's. And then it goes from there and yeah. there and there. Triggers, um, relationship problems, and stuff like that. Anything that yeah. you knew was a trigger prior, yeah. write it down, right? And then throughout, so anything that triggered you to do drugs, yeah. my, my one was just life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, ah, wake up, that's a trigger. But anything that triggered you before, <laughs> <laughs> what's triggered you? I woke up. Yeah. Right, anything that triggered you before, write it down, right? Yeah. And then it, when you become sober, any one of them triggers occur, tick it. Yeah. Right? And you're like, right, 
I need to avoid yeah. that situation yeah. or change it. Yeah. You know, tick all these that's, things. That's the most powerful thing that you can do with your mind is labeling your triggers. And, One million. And, and feeling the trigger. Because if you don't label your triggers and feel it as a trigger, it becomes an emotion yes. that you've got to respond to. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, just on this quickly, I got a message today, actually, a comment on one of my videos. Um, someone commented on the video and said, uh, do you know what? Oh, uh, uh, drinking drugs is ruining my life, ruining my relationship. I've been kicked out. I'm desperate to actually change this Change this now. I want to do it now. Any advice? And I just wrote back and I just said, fucking change your lifestyle. Change yes. everything in your lifestyle. Now, a lot of lads, especially like us, if you're like a lad's lad, a lot of lads, and this was my big one, my big massive, massive hard thing for me was like, oh, but I'm going to miss going out with my friends and hanging around my friends and going to the... I'm nearly fucking 40. I've got two kids, right? Yeah. Like, the truth of the matter is, yeah, yeah. The most important thing in your life is your health, right? And then your fucking family. Yep. Right? It ain't your fucking friends. It ain't the fucking pub. It ain't boozing. It ain't a good time. Do you know what? Life ain't a fucking... It ain't meant to be a good time. I mean, you're meant to have a good time, yep. but life ain't a good time. What's what, Life is about looking after your fucking family, making a fucking good living, and enjoying your time, right? And watching a podcast once a week on a Friday. Watching a podcast. That's Yeah, I mean, it's, like I said, you can have a good time. <laughs> but the point of my thing is... Right. Nothing is more important. Nothing is more important than your health and your mental health and That's your it. family. Right. So just fuck everything else off for a fucking while. And what does it bring? What does it bring to you? What does going to the pub bring to you? What, what is it like? I mean, yeah. for anyone, like, what are you gaining? If you have a family, you're leaving your family at yeah. home to go sit with people. But I, it was the best thing ever to me. It was the yeah. best thing ever. I, that's all I wanted to do at the weekends and as much during the week as I could is be at the pub or be with my mates. But now I've taken alcohol out of that mm. equation and drugs out of that equation. I want to be with my family. Uh, what does that tell you? Yeah, that's it. John. Uh, oh, wait, I've got one more thing, really random, but it's, it's, it's quite good. That's all right, you're right? full of randomness. It's, it's <laughs> no, we love did you. I say the, uh, the the shellfish analogy? No, go on. Ago. So there's a guy who's allergic to fish. So he goes to Oh, the yeah, same, you did say it, but go Yeah, on. so he goes to the same restaurant every week with his same bunch of friends, and he orders fish. He's allergic to fish. When he eats it, his throat swells up. He can't breathe. He has to go into hospital and have an yeah, yeah. You know? So like, fuck me. Maybe I ate too much fish. So he goes back to the same restaurant with his same group of friends next week. Eats a little bit of fish. Oh, fucking his throat swells up again. Back in hospital. He's going home thinking, you know what? Every time I go out and eat this fish with these geezers, I end up in hospital. I'm going to go to that same restaurant on my own. So he goes to the same restaurant without his friends, eats fish, his fucking throat swells up. You know, and he's like, fuck, must be that restaurant. You know what? I'm going to eat fish indoors on my own. Mm gets some fish, eats it indoors on his own, throat swells up in hospital. It's not everyone around you. It's not the places that you're going to do it. It's you. Mm. You need to dig deep and find what's triggering you. Yeah. You know? You can't blame everyone for you using. People yeah. might say, we're getting on it tonight? You can say that to me now. I'd say, oh, fuck, let's have it. No. I'd say no. Yeah. You know? You've yeah. got to sort out you. You can't blame, oh, babe, but I was at the pub last night. What do you expect? Yeah. What do you expect? Yeah. What, you think everyone in the pub's getting on it? Mm. No, you're the problem. And I'm not being, it was like that inner bitch thing you said. I was the problem. Yeah. I blamed everyone else, okay? It was me, 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 me. You are driving me to do drugs. Mm. And it fucking wasn't. They were crying because I was doing drugs. Yeah. You know? Focus on you. Sit down with a pen and a paper. You need to write down everything that you are thankful for. Everything, everything that you are thankful for in life, write it down for the fucking fact that any little thing that makes you happy, positive or smile, write it down. Everything that triggers you to go to the pub, to pick up, to gamble, to do anything, write that down. You've now got two lists. One of these lists are going to save your life. One of these are going to kill you. Mm. Choose a fucking list and live by it. That's the massive thing. I love that. That is a massive thing. If you actually put in your, if you actually go like that, my family and my health or drink and drugs, and you look at it like that, if you look at, but that's the place, you, that's the hardest yeah. place to get to. Yeah. That's the place that I got to that was the hardest, where you go, you put it in front of you, you go, drink and drugs or my family. Oh, I don't want to choose between the two of them. No way. Why do I want to choose between the two of them? I love them both. Mm. But the truth is, if you're fucking serious about loving your family and drinking drugs are causing you fucking hassle and you put them both out in front of you, you've got to be some sort of fucking twat. To pick, yeah, and I was drugs. for years, man. Yeah, me I too. was for years, me you too. know. And, and by the way, anyone that is choosing a drink and drug over their family, I'm not 
having a go. No, 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 but I'm you've got to start working on it. Yeah, you've you got to start I mean? working on it. There's got to be some tough love there. All right. John, Sorry, listen, guys. I'm sure we're pretty much out of time, out of time but... We, we got about, about 15 minutes. Oh, minutes. oh let's oh, have it. Yeah. Right. Give, us another, give us another analogy, Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, walking down the beach <laughs> and there's thousands of pebbles, but you're only <laughs> one of them. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I do like an analogy. I just analogy. got enlightened from that, yeah. <laughs> I do like an analogy. <laughs> I'm joking. Anal orgies. Right, okay, so we've got that. <laughs> All right, we've got a nice message from Martin coming through. Martin. Hello, lads. It's Martin from Southampton here, just replying to producer John's uh, story upload, asking if we had any questions, just a voice note in. Um, I think first things first, let's get a fucking T-shirt on John when he does these story uploads. Hey, fucking, fucking right. Uh, I'm really joking. You look lovely, John. Anyway, long story short, let's cut to the question. <laughs> or not questions, just opinion. Um, I just wanted to say that when I was towards the end... Um, of of going through what I was going through, I can relate to what Kurt was saying with regards to the hat story because I started seeing things as well. And um, I think just to get that confirmation that I wasn't going mad and that you know he was seeing things as well. It's not just the paranoia. I was actually thinking that the door was opening every two minutes and someone was coming in. So I suppose it's related to paranoia, but actually seeing the door, thinking that I was seeing the door. So getting that confirmed, not confirmed, but hearing someone else say that was good. That's good. Um, also, you're doing a great job, lads. Um, Dapper, your dad will be fucking proud of you, mate. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm deadly serious. You did a great job. Thank you. Oh, man. That, yeah. Sorry to mean to miss out you then, Kurt, and your old man, um, who was an absolute legend. Got to watch him on TV a lot, and he's such a nice guy. But, mate, you are also, you're both doing your dad's proud. Honestly, you're oh. fucking absolutely smashing it. You're, you're being real. You're honest. You're helping people. Oh, you're helping people right. more than he's you know. Gone. <laughs> he's so, gone. A lot of love from here. He's gone. From me. So. Oh, he's gone. And uh, yeah, keep up the good work. Love you both. Oh, thank yeah, you. An hour man. and sixteen. I cry. Who won? Uh, oh, Martin. My. Thank you. And uh, um, yeah. <laughs> now, honestly, um, yeah, you know what? And that's why I spoke about my psychosis. Yeah. By the way, it wasn't a show off. Yeah, but do you reckon I, there's people out there that had that that are keeping it in, thinking that oh, they were just percent, going mad? One million percent. I've heard of people taking their own lives because of what they've seen believing it's true i didn't say that to show off of what i've got or how much i've done yeah i'm sharing my journey so you feel that you're not alone because if you think oh fuck kirk's sober now but then things that were happening to kirk are happening to me so if we both went through the same thing i can get what kirk yeah. got you know what i mean i wasn't trying to yeah yeah you yeah. know i'm just talking from experience that's a great voice note martin and yeah man yeah, and it was me at your door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Martin. Yeah, and thanks, man. Um, yeah, that's good, man. And um, yeah, to thank you for mentioning our fathers. We want to be good fathers too. John, yeah. what we got next, man? And thank you for telling me to put a shirt on. I need. Yeah, to hear I it. saw that last night. I want, myself. Le- I want less clothes now. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Want... I was like, he's definitely. Ca- he's put. It, what's it called? It's a first trap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> did, did anyone slide in your DMs after the time? Uh, absolutely not, sadly. But please do. Please slide in. <laughs> <laughs> Send him a dick pic, guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So now we've got another message from Alex. This one's a bit of a roller coaster. It's like a it's a long story, but it, it it's, it's all wild. right. Let's go, Alex. Take it away. Boys, um, so oops, sorry. That was- Last September, I hit my rock bottom, hundred percent. Um, my wife turned around and said, you know, it was done. Um, was filed for divorce, wow. all that stuff. I was more Dan's side of of the fence, I suppose, um, destroying weekends, um, forgetting the family time was, was where joy is. Um, wow, yeah. just went out caning it with the boys, um, drink drugs, all nighters, chatting absolute rubbish in kitchens, planning businesses, yeah. ridiculous stuff. <laughs> no. Um, that would obviously never happen. So, yeah, she, she had enough, left me. I did a few months over then. Couldn't, couldn't carry it on as I drank again in January. And then... Had a couple of binges through January. Um, then my birthday was in February, so I binged them. Then hit probably a second rock bottom, just lay there. My daughter was at my ex's. I was just alone in, in our old family home. And that's when I watched the first episode with Kirk. Um, wow. Decided there and then, I'm done with it. Just about to hit six months sober now. Wow. Well done. Fucking legend. Watched every episode of this. 
I think the pair of you together are brilliant. The other guests have been brilliant. All the scientific stuff, Sober Dave, Alcohol Explained, all that stuff. So I just want to say a massive, massive thank you um, and a good good outcome. Um, so my ex saw how well things are going. Yeah! Also gone through legally, bought her out of the house and everything. But now the random weirdest situation, getting back on track. Yeah! So yes, well massive done. cheers, guys. Fucking hell, um, man. Honestly, I've got, I've got. Keep to... doing what you're doing. That's crazy. To brilliant people, you wouldn't see. Well, unless you watch the podcast, you wouldn't see. You know, Dan's out there making comedy. Kirk, back in the Towie days, everyone wanted your life. Um, people wouldn't scratch the surface and, and realise that you both struggled with this shit. Wow. And like a lot of people out there, it's evident with some people. It's not evident with others. Um, from the outside looking in. People probably thought I really had good life, good shit together, nice house, nice car, lovely wife, yeah. beautiful daughter, and I nearly threw it all away. Well, I did throw it all away. Um, I was just fortunate that I realised I had to do it all on my own. Um, I'm now... Fucking hell, from, from watching the podcast. Um, podcasts Fucking... like this reach wow. so many more people that, than you probably think, so... Thanks a lot. Keep going, boys. Legends. What was his name? What was his name again? Alex. Alex. I've got a spiritual boner for that right now. <laughs> oh, mate. Wait. I'm so happy. And Alex, like, I just want to say, man, like, listen, f- thank you for thanking us, but that, 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 that's your work, man. That's, that, that's, yeah. that's you. That's on you. That's your work that you've done. And Alex, listen, Alex just goes to show, you're, if, you're, if, you, if your relationship has fallen apart, right, you've got to remember... The, I mean, look. In some cases, it's not just our faults, right? There's, there's more, there's more that can go into mm. that. Come the women's fault as well, and stuff like that. But look, if you're struggling with addiction, if you're, if you're in and out of those sessions at the weekends, and your partner's had enough and she's left, there's no way you're fixing that relationship until you fix yourself. Yes. There's no way Preach. that that woman fell in love with you uh, for you, right? Yes. And you changed. Mm. Yeah, you get yourself back on track. You know what women are like. Women, women. We'll only want you once, Once you know, you know. if you're on a woman's case and you're fucking desperate to try and sort it out and get it back, it pushes them further away. You need to take a look inside, step back like this guy has done, and fucking work on yourself, and they will see it, and if they're meant to come back, or if it's meant to be, and they truly love you, once you fix yourself, they'll be there. If not, once you've fixed yourself, you'll be in a much better position to get on with the rest of your life. Mm. The drink and the drugs will do nothing but destroy you while you're alone and going through something like that. I love that. And that's from Dan's ex- personal experience there, isn't yeah, it? it? Is. Proofs in the pudding. Oh, it mate, is. That, what a great voice. Man, man, you guys brought back a family. Yeah, right? man. Yeah. <sighs> Beautiful stuff. All right, we got our next message from Amy. Yeah, Amy. What's going on? Hi, guys. Just listened to your podcast for this week. I just wanted to show my support, really, for Dan. I can see that he's obviously struggling. But I just wanted to say what you're doing, Dan. Uh, Kirk is fantastic of what he's doing. But Dan, particularly, what you're raising awareness of is not something that's spoken about regularly. And people think that they don't have a problem because they're only doing it at the weekends mm. or maybe midweek, but it's fucking people's lives up. Yeah. I've had first-hand experience with a partner that, that does that with when we've got kids, and it fucks people's lives up. And it's so important what you're doing, um, making people aware that, yeah, actually, this is an issue. You know, just don't, just because you weren't as bad as Kirk doesn't mean that mm-hmm. you're not doing a good job or that you're not mm. good enough. You're not a good enough addi- addict. You know, it's ridiculous. I just think it's fantastic what you're raising awareness for. This lad culture, mm. you know, getting into your 30s. You know, it's all right. It's all well and good when you're 18, you know, early 20s. And then you start having kids and this this carries through into your 30s and yeah. it holds you back. You know, um, yeah. so good for you. What you're raising awareness of is something that hasn't been made aware of really you know it's a problem so you know so many people can relate to you so please carry on what you're doing is what i'm trying to say because you're doing brilliant thank you man yeah that's good that's good thank you that's why i love i love your story Mm. um what amy says because you know Mm. you you are you are the everyday guy the, the flagship for men's culture, you really are from your vine days. You, you're dapper, you're a geezer. Dapper last, yeah. Lad culture, mean? yeah. Um, and and to say that, uh, to admit 
that you, uh, that, you know, lost, con- lose lost control, control. For, just for three days of the weekend, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, maybe the Monday. You know what I mean? I like that's your story yeah. ne- really needs to be pushed more because as as some people think, oh, if you're just having vendors on the weekend, you you ain't yeah. you ain't bad. You're tell you're telling it how it is. So that was a great point from Amy. Thank to, you. What you're doing, mate. And mm. honestly, I'm fucking proud because because I, 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 we drifted apart near hard addiction. But some seeing some snippets and videos, you didn't even look there, brother. Like yeah. on the on, on the weekdays, maybe you know yeah. you're doing your little cheeky chappy thing. I've seen videos of you at, at like award shows or anything I like that. I can't watch them back. And yeah. you, you're not you're not there. It was like you were in autopilot, Dan. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? I so I love it. your story, Amy. That was great to point that up. And yeah, thank you, thank you. I think and that and that's why I really like the dynamic with me and Kirk because there's people that are going to come onto this that can't relate to me and they'll relate to him and vice versa. Mm. And I do think that you know if you've got kids and um, a family and a good job or anything that you want to hold on to and you can't control yourself once you start, then you've got a problem. And unfortunately, I think that's the message that's kind of upsetting a few people because I didn't want to hear that I had a problem. And I know my friends, some of my friends that are, st- that are looking at me now that are still cracking on, they don't want to hear that. It's, it's a tough one, but uh, I'm not going to, f- I'm not going to falter on that point. I'm not going to pull back on it. I'm going to, I'm going to keep hammering it home a little bit because I think that there's too many families being destroyed and lads that are taking their own lives because they, their families have been destroyed. There's nothing that the, I think one of the biggest killers out there is the shame and regret. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, one million percent. Yeah. One million. Thank you for that, mate. Uh, for Amy, Amy was it? Amy, Amy, yeah. Amy. Amy. Thank you, Amy. And um, yeah, I struggled last week, and uh, I'm having a good week this week, and now it's even better. So thanks, John. Excellent. Anything else? Yeah. Take well, your top off. Why don't you? <laughs> well, and uh, as well as my shorts. Right. Okay. So, <laughs> um, all right. Should we do one more? Yeah, one more. Funny. Yeah. Well, we'll do we'll do this one, and then we'll do a nice quick one at the end. Okay. All right. So this is kind of going on the other side of things. This is more Kirk related. Dan, Kirk, I just wanted to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I've been listening to all your menace sobrieties from day one. And off the back of that, I went to CA. I'm coming up to six months sober next oh, week. well done. And it's the best thing that I've ever done. Um, wake up, pray, meditation, write my gratitude list. I've Love done it. my 12 steps. Fucking nightly really. inventory. I reach out to other people. I attend meetings regularly. And I'm in the process of taking someone else through the 12-step program. Wow. Um, My life has changed completely from getting on it to sort of three or four times a week from the age of 17 to 34. I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop for no one. The only thing that helped stop me was a CA program. Mm. And I'm not just saying it, but it's watching all these podcasts every single Friday night with my girlfriend. We sit and we watch it. um, I love that. so the good. most I love it. Uh, what was his name? Uh, that is Mitchell. I love it more. I love yeah, it. They're just carrying on the rest of that message, but it really is the best thing on telly for me. Very inspirational watching the both of you and just keep doing what you're doing. 100% fuck the haters. There's too many people out here you're helping. And I mean that you, you've helped save my life. If wow. you've helped save my life for someone that couldn't do it for themselves, you're 100% oh. helping thousands of other people. So just keep doing what you're doing and God bless. We're back on telly. That's yeah. <laughs> no, I'm but that's look. Honestly, oh, I'm so happy about that I'm one. Just Mitchell, well done on the sobriety. Well done for taking. So this is what you do in CA. So you learn the steps, yeah, and then you take someone else through the wow. steps. So it's it's a it's, it's very cheesy. It's a gift that keeps giving because you learn and then you help someone what you've learned. But it also helps you by helping others. Yeah, it takes away this ego. You know, when we were addicts, it's the me, 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 and it, Mitchell. And then when you start helping other people you're giving back for all them years humble you took do you know what i mean and uh man that's that is why i do this man and that's why dan does it you know what i mean because i was in pain physically mentally emotionally fucking spiritually i was done man and you know and ca was like someone clicked a light on and to know that i've passed that to, to someone else and that's now now mitchell's passing that on to someone else it's beautiful and, isn't it and i'm only giving this because someone give it to me yeah. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what this... Love you, Mitchell. Thank you for that. Do you know what this is, Kirk? It's this podcast and the CA now is what, back in the day, 
STDs were. To you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were, yeah. That's what you were passing. And now, <laughs> now it's something positive. Now, um, I do take the piss, but Mitchell, that I, I got so excited. I yeah. get so excited by that because, right. because we got such small minds, really. We're just like, we do this, and then we just see a few negative comments. Yeah. And we're like, what are we doing? Like, well, why does people hate me? <laughs> yes. Come on, you got one more for us, One more. Job. Yeah, we got Love like you, a, Mitch. Yeah, love you, man. Got an international caller, Marco. Marco. Polo. Hey guys, um, this is Marco from South Africa here. Hey! Um, I just wanted to say, uh, well, just over five months sober now. Well Whoa. done! Yeah, I've been flirting with the idea of sobriety for a long time um, until I, st I was scrolling on Instagram and I stumbled across one of Dan's videos, uh, which led me well, to the what? podcast. And um, basically, my life changed from that moment on. Wow! Um, super relatable i think mine and dan's type of addiction was uh very much the same um weekend thing but um once i got on it there was no stopping um wow love the work that you guys do uh i right. listen to this uh, podcast religiously it's a great help for me and yeah loving life wow Listen, loving life. That was great. Loving life, man. Because of your videos. Going you know, viral in going South viral Africa. In South Africa. <laughs> Marco. Polo. Well Honestly. That's really cool, man. What's, what fucking great people we have in this world. Yeah. Oh, that's mate. really pepped me up. You guys should be proud. You guys, you're yeah. doing great things. Literally, like. Yeah. Yeah. Spreading. Like you say, the STD of positiveness, not like yeah, that I know. kind of positive. But, but look, listen, yeah. that's something that everyone can take, everyone out there can take from this. Listen, if the best, for, it, 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 like, it's almost like uh, the, the shitter it's been for you, the the more you've got to give to other people when yeah. you sort your shit out. So yeah. if that ain't motivation, sort your shit out and then fucking help people around you. I love that. I used to, I used to actually genuinely think I was a bit of a knob. And mm. now I think I'm like just 25% less knob. Not literally, guys. I mean, I'm talking from a, uh, what's it called? Metaphorical perspective. There's st I've st I'm still 100. You know what I mean, guys. See how much <laughs> that's cheered me up. I'm buzzing. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for them comments. <laughs> for the comments, you know, I always do speak about the negative. It's only because me and Dan during the week, we'll be like, oh, see what this guy said. And we'll have a little bit yeah. of banter back and forward. Don't say that because they're all going to fucking try and do naughty <laughs> ones now. So we No, but then the point I do, so I don't read um, much comments on um, the long videos. I'll read them, that I'll get inbox them. Yeah. You know, I read the YouTube comments and I'll re try and reply to as many as I can. I was, so. I was conversing with a guy from, well, I won't say his name, but a guy sent me a voice note and um, I replied to it and was like, mate, like he's like, Mate, thank you so much, you and Dan, for the videos. I'm like, mate, you sound so fucking happy. And he's yeah. like, why? You've replied to me. Why are you replied? I said, because mm. well, you're you're on a journey, man. You're, you're spreading yeah. love. You give me love, yeah. I'll give you love back. Do you know what I mean? But no. you get mouthy and you get... <laughs> yeah, you no. get mouthy, yeah, you get blocked. <laughs> you got John to deal with. <laughs> right, guys, listen, I'm going to wrap it up there. Kirk, thank you. Another another great thank podcast. You. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, John. Yeah, man. Pleasure, I mean, pleasure, um, pleasure. Kirk, you're not going to be with us next week. What am I going to do? Uh... Mm, who else on Towie's free? No, I'm joking. Yeah. No, uh, <laughs> Not, they're very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one that's free. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, all right. I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I'll come up with something. I'll get a guest in or something, 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 something. I'll work it out. But Kirk's going to be away for a week or so. And then when you're back, um, we've we're booked going. in a load of guests. So Perfect. it's going to be me, you and guests. So that, that's good fun. So guys, stay tuned. We're going to keep chopping up, mixing up. John, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, just keep spreading the positivity like you know everyone's at a different stage of life uh, ultimately you just got to do what's best for you and the people around you intend to the garden you can touch don't worry about saving everything just you know do what you can sort of mm, reach thing. within your arms within, with your arms reach as they say and T tend to the garden you can touch yeah. well, talking about gardens <laughs> talking about gardens I like that grass <laughs> is not greener on the other side the grass is only greener where you water it alright well, okay, okay. So got that's it. your life two analogies I've got to do one you got um, grass one you lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Yeah. All right? So, so where are Johnny? Okay, guys, <laughs> thank you very much. That was Menace to Sobriety. And, oh, come and see us at the live show. The link to come and see us at the live show. <laughs> we've Yeah, we've sold about, we sold half the tickets for the show, I think, oh, mate. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's well, been kicking right. off. So if you want to come along and see us live and throw, you, throw your um, bras out, no, throw your questions out and we talk there. Then there, John, thank you. Kirk, thank you. Follow us on Instagram. That was Menace to Sobriety. We are out. Hello. We are going to take the Menace to Sobriety to the live stage and we need a live studio audience
audience to interact with us, to come along, listen, laugh, and learn everything about sobriety, mental health, well-being, and just come along for a night out with like-minded people. We are going to be going live on the 30th of August, 27th of September, 25th of October, and the 29th of November. That's one a month. Get your tickets now. Come down, meet the team, and have some fun. Menace to Sobriety Live, coming soon. Oh yes, and don't forget, if you want to come and see me live and meet me, I'm going on tour. The Daniel O'Reilly Out of Character Full UK Tour kicks off in January 2024 and tickets are on sale right now. I'm going to try and get out and meet as many of you as possible. And of course, I'm going to be bringing the laughs all over the UK. There's 23 dates right now and I'm adding more all the time. Hit the link in the bio and get your tickets now and come have some fun. If you're going through a tough time at the moment, please don't suffer in silence. Feel free to pick up the phone and contact any of these helplines. I personally, myself, at one of my darkest points, contacted the Samaritans and it completely changed my outlook and got me out of a really deep, dark place. A problem shared really is a problem halved. So if you don't feel confident talking to those around you, check out any of these organizations and give them a call. This is my Facebook group, just simply search on Facebook, Men and Their Emotions. It's for men only, uh, but once you're in there, you can talk anonymously about your problems and help others and just feel a little bit of community. So come join the conversation, Men and Their Emotions, on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Menace of sobriety. Just a minute. Just, just a minute.